Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the best weapon build you can use with the Devastator. So if you're ever struggling with any of the pod rescue, bosses, or anything like that, this build literally kills everything. Bosses within, I, I want to say the longest time it took me to kill a boss was probably right here with Yagak. It took me about maybe 8 seconds, I want to say, if even. It just completely melts everything in sight. Like, no issues, no questions, none of that. And the setup is also universal because the armor set I'm using will work with other classes as well. So even if you want to use a different class, you can bring this armor right over to that other class. Let's say it's a Technomancer, Trickster, or a Pyromancer, and it will still work perfectly well. I couldn't think of any downsides to this build, except for it being a little bit too overpowered, and you may get bored with how easy the game gets. So saying all of that there, let's start the build off with the skills. And with our first skill, we're going to go with Gravity Leap for a bunch of reasons. Whenever we activate this skill, we're going to increase our weapon damage by 70% and our damage mitigation by 15% for 10 seconds. Now, since the skill is on a 4.9 second cooldown, we can pretty much keep those buffs activated the entire time, just giving ourselves more damage and decreasing the damage we take. But I would say this the next reason is probably tied for the main reason is because there is a node in the Pax tree called Against Devastating Odds. Damaging at least 3 enemies with a kinetic skill grants you 30% armor piercing for 4 seconds, but damaging less enemies makes your shots critical shots for 4 seconds, and that is pretty much the main way this build does so much damage and absolutely melts bosses left and right. Because we're, we're pretty much going to be focusing on hitting just one or two enemies max with this skill so we can make all of our shots crit. I mean, if we do happen to hit three enemies and get a 30% armor piercing bonus, that isn't absolutely the worst thing because we're still going to be able to do a lot of damage. But we really, really want that crit, uh, what's it called, our shots to turn into crit shots for four seconds because that's our highest source of damage. Another really nice thing about this skill, other than it's, you know, it's short cooldown of 4.9 seconds, is how insane its mobility is. We can basically fly around the map taking out enemies left, right, and center, or escaping sticky situations, so it's just really handy all around. And even when we're fighting the Arbiter boss, and he does that big AoE attack with all the red circles, you basically feels impossible to dodge. When you activate this skill and you're kind of just hovering in the air you can avoid all damage completely while you're just sitting in the air. So you become invincible until he finishes that attack, and then you can just swoop in and finish him off. This skill is absolutely phenomenal. Then for our other skill, we're going to go with Endless Mass, which is going to activate all of the exact same nodes as Gravity Leap. So it's going to activate Alter Charge, increasing our weapon damage uh, into the fray, increasing our damage mitigation, and that node in the pack tree against devastating odds. So we're going to be able to keep those buffs going, literally all of them indefinitely for the entire time. But again, the main reason we're going with this is because of a mod that we placed on the armor called Shattered Armor. It increases our weapon damage against enemies afflicted by endless mass by 25% for 6 seconds. So not only is this skill going to interrupt enemies, stun them, activate all of the nodes in the class tree and the pack tree, but we're also going to do even more damage to those enemies. So it's just a really solid skill all around. It's pretty much the same thing as Gravity Leap in terms of what it's going to do for us. And again, it also has a short cooldown of 4.9 seconds. So we'll be able to spam Gravity Leap and Endless Mass pretty, pretty rapidly, to be honest. So that covers both of those skills. Then for our last skill is Tremor. Now this one's going to help out with survivability because... It deals a little bit of damage to enemies close to us, but the main thing for this is it drains, for me, it's 6,000 health from enemies within a medium uh, radius around you. So this is going to help us out with staying alive longer, and the main main reason for this is another mod I have placed on the armor called Power of the Stones. When this skill, well, when the skill Tremor is activated, all party members, so yourself included and your teammates, are given a 30% weapon damage bonus for 8 seconds. So this is just a huge skill for either one doing a lot of burst damage to very strong targets like bosses, captains, elites, or if you find yourself low on health, you can just pop this here and basically just refill all of your health instantly. It also has a 9.9 .9 second cooldown, which is a little bit long. It's not as short as the other two skills, 
but it's also not extremely long. So you don't want to pop this just whenever you want to wait for more precise moments because this one's more of an overkill kind of skill which you'll want to save again for either one sticky situations when you're completely surrounded or when you're just dealing with a single strong elite captain or whatever just to get them out of the way even quicker i mean it's not absolutely needed but it's just a huge damage buff so i figured why not have this so that covers everything for the skills now so let's hop on over to our weapons now i chose to go with the mirage because it came kind of perfect the attributes are amazing and it comes with a very solid mod on the weapon now for the attributes it comes with crit damage which is just going to increase all of the damage of our crit shots do and when more than half of our shots are crit shots this is a very huge damage increase so this attribute is absolutely needed then the second attribute is skill life leech which isn't too bad it's just going to make our skills more reliable for healing so that's another sort that's another way we can get out of a sticky situation if our health goes low because our skills also do have a very short cooldown. So that's a nice backup plan right there. Then the third attribute is absolutely perfect. Again, close range damage, just going to increase our damage against enemies that are too close to us. Very straightforward. Now for the mod that came with it is Brain Eater. Critical shots do not consume ammo. That's why when you see me shooting at those bosses and I, it looks like I'm emptying the magazine into them. But in reality, the magazine, the ammo barely drops in it because of this mod. That's kind of how I'm able to absolutely unload a ridiculous amount of bullets and kill them in one quick session. Just because of this one mod that comes with it. Now, I don't want to say this mod is absolutely needed, but it does help out quite a bit. If you could get something else to increase your damage, like Anomaly Enhancement or some other kind of mod to increase your weapon damage or firepower, that's a good option too. But personally, I found Brain Eater to be fantastic. Then the other mod I swapped it out for is Dark Sacrifice. This is going to drain 25% of our max health in exchange for 35% weapon damage. See, you'd probably think this is kind of a bad thing, but the amount of healing that we can do and how fast we can kill enemies, it pretty much cancels out the downside of this mod, which is really fantastic. Then the bonus mod that came with it is absolutely amazing, Fortress. Shots increase your, cur uh, your current armor and resistance by 5%, stacking up to 3 times. Then at maximum stacks, the buff is then doubled to 30% and it grants us 25% increased damage for 10 seconds. And this weapon has a really fast fire rate and we're basically just going to be shooting non-stop. So we're going to be able to keep that mod going the entire time. Now another backup weapon that would actually be really good is an assault rifle with the burst fire variation. Because if you didn't know, the burst fire variation does the most damage compared to the full auto variation and the semi-auto variation. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is a good backup is because the SMG is only good for close to maybe a medium range, whereas the assault rifle is going to be pretty handy for picking off enemies from a distance. Even though the SMG is still better in terms of damage, especially at close range, but the assault rifle is better for long range. I just have this as a backup I switch to every now and then when enemies are too far away. I just pull this out and take them out quickly and then switch back to my SMG. But again, the attributes on the uh, assault rifle are actually really good. This one, I want to say I ruled it absolutely perfect. I just got insanely, insanely lucky. It comes with crit damage, close range damage, long range damage. Everything is just, I was actually pretty stunned when I got this. It's just absolutely perfect. Then the mod it comes with is Anomaly Enhancement. Remember I was talking about the SMG, about getting a mod that increases your damage or firepower? This exactly does that. We receive a passive firepower bonus equal to 40% of our anomaly power. So this is the best tier 2 mod you can get in terms of damage, which is really, really good. And then the other mod I swapped it out for is Fortress. Again, just to increase our armor, resistance, and our damage for 10 seconds. Really straightforward. And the bonus mod is Dark Sacrifice. Again. So this is just a huge all-around long-range uh, long range weapon. Now the reason I don't use this for boss fights is because... I kind of tend to run out of ammo to reload instead of just killing them all in one quick sweep. It's not a bad thing, but I just like to have that one quick sweep that I can do with the SMG instead of kind of reload, take a few steps back, do my full combo with my skills, and then finish them off. That's why I like the SMG more, just because it's just one, one and done. That's about it. But an assault rifle isn't a bad backup option. So that covers everything for the weapons. So let's hop on over to the armor now. And for the helmet, we're going to go with the helmet of Maxwell's Demon. And we're going to be using the full set because the set bonus is absolutely amazing and it works with pretty much every single class. 
So what it does is each successful assault weapon shot grants a firepower bonus that stacks up to 50%. To reach the bonus, a half of the weapon's mag uh, magazine's ammo must be spent as successful shots. On achieving maximum stacks, the firepower bonus is raised to 100% and burn is applied to both the player and enemies within a 15 meter radius. The bonus is act active for up to half of the weapon's ammo uh, ma magazine ammo capacity, then the bonus is lost upon reloading or swapping weapons. So pretty much land shots with your gun and increase your firepower and do more damage. The more rounds you land on an enemy, the more damage you're going to do. That's basically the gist of it. Now the attributes that come with it are perfect. It comes with bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, and close range damage. You literally could not ask for anything else. Then the mod that comes with it is Dum Dum Bullets. This is just going to increase our assault weapon damage by 12%, very straightforward. And the bonus mod that comes with it is Anomaly Echo. Whenever we activate a skill, we're going to increase our firepower and anomaly power for 6 seconds. And if we go back to the assault, uh, the assault rifle, I do have Anomaly Enhancement on it, which we receive a passive firepower bonus equal to 40% of our anomaly power. So that anomaly power bonus from the mod Anomaly Echo is going to turn into more firepower when we do use the assault uh, assault rifle so that is definitely a very handy mod then the mod i swapped out for is plate piercer this increases our critical damage by 30 percent of uh by 50 percent of our armor piercing and if we take a look at our armor piercing i'm able to get 60 percent without any buffs going any anything increasing our character's damage just nothing going this is just our character being static now, if we do use our skills, we can actually get this up to 90% because of the, uh, what's it called, the Pax node against devastating odds. If you do happen to hit more uh, than three enemies with our skills, uh, those skills being Gravity Leap or Endless Mass, we increase our armor piercing by 30%. So in theory, we can get this up to a total of uh, 37.5 uh, increased critical damage, but then every shot we land isn't going to crit. So it's one of those, it's a hit, or, it's a hit and a miss. But either way, 30% increased critical damage being static is very huge. Then the second piece of armor is the chest piece, and again, the armor of Maxwell's demon. Same attributes: bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, close range damage. Absolutely huge. The mods that come with it is personal space. This is just going to increase our close range damage by 12%. Very similar to the Dum Dum Bullets mod, but this one is just for uh, what's it called a close range damage buff. Then the bonus mod that comes with it is Captain Hunter. This is going to increase our damage against elites by 16%. Very straightforward, not a whole lot to it because we do want more damage to elites because those are the tougher enemies to take down and we don't need anything to really take down those grunt level enemies because they'll just blow in the wind so easily. Then the mod I swapped out for is Power of the Stones. Like, like I was saying before with the skill Tremor, whenever we activate the skill Tremor, ourselves and our teammates are given a 30% increased weapon damage buff for 8 seconds. So this is another absolutely huge mod that you definitely need for your setup. Now moving on to the legs, which is the third piece of the Maxwell Demon set. So now we got the set bonus going, we are absolutely set. And again, it comes with these same attributes. So we got... Three pieces of armor with perfect attributes, bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, and close range damage. Now the mod that comes with it is blood loss, uh, Bloodlust. Critical shots increase our firepower by, for me, it's 22,000, stacking up to three times and deteriorating every five seconds. So when we land pretty much more than half of our shots as crit shots, we're going to be able to keep this going the entire time. So it's just an easy increase, uh, an easy boost to our firepower, no questions asked. Then the bonus mod is a dead mod. Sadly, I wasn't able to get anything better, but not a huge issue because so far we've gotten a ton of good mods. The mod being auto reflect. This one just, uh, in, uh, what's it called? It just buffs the skill uh, reflect bullets, which we aren't using. So that's not important at all. Then the mod I swapped out for is shattered armor. Whenever we, uh, enemies that get hit by the skill endless mass, uh, take increased weapon damage by 25% for 6 seconds. So another, mo uh, another mod I was mentioning earlier with the skills, which is definitely, definitely needed. So now let's hop on over to the gloves. And I actually happened to go with the Marshall's gloves because they just came, they just came really nice with the mods. The attributes it comes with is max health, which isn't too bad, increasing our survivability. 
cooldown reduction, which is really good for our skills, and skill life leech, which is okay. We weren't able to get the bonus firepower, close range damage, but we were able to get cooldown reduction, which isn't too bad. Now, the mod that comes with it is Mosh Pit. This one isn't absolutely needed. I kind of got to a point where I was running out of mods to pick, so I was just like, ah, why not grab this one? Or not grab it, but I luckily landed on it. So, enemies hit by the skill Endless Mass uh, also get inflicted by... Also, Endless Mass also inflicts vulnerability on all enemies pulled in by the skill. So, those enemies, uh, when vulnerability gets applied to them, they just take increased damage. It's... That's all it is to it. Nothing else. Very straightforward. Then the mod that came, uh, the bonus mod that came with it is Kingslayer. Critical, sh uh, critical shots on elites increases our firepower. For me, it's two hundred. It's by two hundred thousand for ten seconds. Now that is such such a huge firepower increase. Definitely a mod I would say that is needed just because of how huge it is and how easy it is to activate. Then the bonus mod, uh, not the bonus mod, then the other mod I swapped out for is Stare Into the Barrel. This is just going to increase our firepower. For me, again, this may vary for you depending on your level. For me, it's by 55,000 for each enemy in close range, stacking up to four times. So this is just a big damage, uh, a big firepower increase. Not absolutely, absolutely needed, but if you can get this, it's going to be handy. Then with our last piece of armor, I'm actually going with the Death Proof Foot Gear. Now, the attributes are, again, not really the best. Max health, close range damage, and healing received. More stuff to increase our survivability, which isn't too bad. Now, the mod that comes with it is Life of the Party. This just uh, reduces incoming damage by 6% for each enemy in close range. So this is going to help out with our survivability by quite a bit. Then the bonus mod that came with it is Circle of Power. This one is definitely needed you definitely definitely need this mod is because in the class tree the pax tree we aren't able to get a whole lot of resistance so we are a little bit weak to that damage so that's why circle of power is very important this is going to boost our resistance by 10 percent every time we use a skill stacking up to three times and deteriorating uh every seven seconds so with this here we'll be able to get a 30 percent uh increased resistance bonus Pretty much indefinitely like we won't ever run out of this because we'll be able to use our skills so frequently and so often we'll just constantly keep this stacked up then the mod i swapped out for is sharp eye critical shots while aiming down sights grants for me it's seventy four thousand firepower for five seconds stacking up to three times now this one i would also classify as a must must have just because that's a, that's a lot of firepower that's going to be really easy to claim because, again, we're going to be landing ridiculous amounts of critical shots. So we'll be able to get the full buff out of this mod pretty much in an instance. So that covers everything for the armor. So let's hop on over to the class tree now. Now, for the class tree, I pretty much just grabbed everything that would increase my damage, crit damage, close range damage, you know, the whole shebang. But anyways, let's get into it. So for the first one, increased weapon damage. Uh, the next one, increased armor piercing by 10%. And this also increases our crit damage because if we go back to, where is it? Plate piercer, increase your critical damage by 50% of your armor piercing uh, value. So not only is that going to help us with taking out tankier enemies, but it's also going to increase our crit damage as well, which is really nice. Then the next one is another increased close range uh increased close range weapon damage by 15%. Then I actually went down the tree because by the end of this, I had two extra nodes and I figured the best thing to put them into would be reduced cooldown for our skills, gravity leap and endless mass. And then this big node right here, which I think is actually really important uh, into the fray. So whenever we activate the, uh, either endless mass or gravity leap, we're gonna increase our damage mitigation by 15% for 10 seconds. Now, this is actually really huge because there isn't any kind of armor or resistance nodes that we can grab up here to help us out with our survivability. So this node, I feel like, is definitely a must-have when going through the tree because we don't get a whole lot of protection. So we'll continue going down the tree. We grab more increased armor piercing uh, and then increased assault weapon damage. So that's going to apply to the assault rifle, the SMG, uh, double guns, large machine guns. All of those there. Then the next one is another increased weapon damage node. Uh, then we go up champion. This one's actually very, very huge. 
Using skills increases your weapon damage by 45% for 10 seconds. So it doesn't matter what skill we use, we can use any skill and we're going to get a 45% increased weapon damage buff for 10 seconds. So we're pretty much going to be able to keep this activated the entire time without any hassles or anything because you're always going to be activating one kind of ability, especially with a tense, uh, what's it called with it with this lasting 10 seconds, this is not going to be an issue at all. Then we go down to grab increased crit damage by 20%, very big. Uh, another increase our weapon damage by 15%. Then another big note here that this one's going to increase our assault weapon damage by 20%. And it's also going to increase the chance of us picking up another assault rifle like machine gun, submachine gun, and double gun. So you'll have a chance at finding better variations of the weapon you have. Hopefully... Uh, you find one with uh, with this note, it'll make it easier to find one with all the uh, right attributes that you want and possibly the mods as well. So this is definitely another key node. Uh, then we go down the tree to grab uh, increased close range damage, uh, more weapon damage. Then we actually head up, uh, up, up the branch here to grab increase our weapon life leech because we are going to be shooting pretty much non-stop. So having some weapon life leech is going to be really, really handy. So that's going to be our pretty much our main source of healing is through weapon life leech and killing enemies to regain our health. Then the next node again is another very big node, Bounty Hunter. We're going to increase our damage to elites by 15% and elites deal 15% less damage to us. So this is these two nodes right here uh, into the fray and bounty hunter are pretty much the only protection nodes that we really get. Then we continue down the branch to increase our reload time, which isn't really important at all. And then enemies who who damage you will have their physical damage reduced by 10% for five seconds. So pretty much. This one's mainly going to be helpful against uh, bosses that don't die within one second. Okay, maybe they take a couple of extra seconds to die, but pretty much enemies that hit you are going to deal less damage to you afterwards. So this one is definitely going to help out with the bosses in terms of protection. And then I grab more armor piercing. You could also grab more weapon life leech if you're having uh, troubles surviving, but I found grabbing more armor piercing was just more beneficial to me, but you can play around with these two. And then the last one, again, very huge node, uh, Altered Charge. When kinetic skills end, so after we use Gravity uh, gravity Leap or Endless Mass, after they're done, we get a 70% weapon damage buff for 10 seconds. This is absolutely huge. So the way I have this tr uh, tree set up is you're going to get the most damage possible with a little bit of survivability, which is what you're going to need with this, with this setup. But I think I did this absolutely perfect, so literally just copy and paste this into your tree and you'll be doing well. So now let's hop on over to the Pax tree. Now I went the top branch because this was the most beneficial. The bottom one was more, I guess, for anomaly power and your skills. So let's start it off. So with the first one, we're grabbing hunting season because no matter what, we got to grab it to go top here, but it's actually really good. This is going to increase our weapon damage by 30% and our magazine size by 50%. So this is another thing that's going to help us out with basically keeping infinite ammo. We're going to have so many bullets and constantly uh, getting our bullets back because of the uh, the mod Brain Eater that's on our SMG, crit shot to not consume ammo. So this is more of a, I guess, just kind of like a help out, just having a larger magazine size to ensure that we don't reload. Then the next one is Harvester. This is just going to increase our weapon life leech by 10% and additionally increase our weapon life leech by 2% for every enemy in close range up to another 10%. So in total, it's possible to get a maximum of 20% weapon life leech from this one node. But realistically, we're never going to be surrounded by that many enemies because we're going to be taking them out so quickly. So you'll usually have about at least 12% weapon life leech just from this one node here, which is really, really nice. Then the next node is Finishing Touch. This is going to increase our weapon damage by the percent of ammo missing from our magazine. So whenever we enter a boss fight, you can just empty about half of the gun's magazine just to increase your weapon damage by about, believe, 50% if you empty out half the magazine. So that's a huge weapon damage buff right there. And because we have the mod Brain Eater on, we're never going to fully run out of ammo. So we'll always have a 50% weapon damage buff going during that boss fight, which is very, very huge. Then the second part to this is killing shots replenish 35% of our magazine. So even when we're just running around killing those grunt level enemies, we're still never going to reload because one... Brain Eater, Critical Shots do not consume ammo, and then even when we do kill enemies, we're going to replenish whatever ammo may be missing. So you're 
you're never going to reload pretty much. We have two things covering us for ammo, which is perfect. Then we go up the branch to grab uh, armored division. Increase our armor piercing by 20%, which also increases our crit damage by 10% as well. Then the next part of it is it's going to reduce the cooldowns of uh, gravity leap and endless mass by 50% of our armor piercing. And if we go back to our armor piercing, again, we're at about 60%. So that's a 30% cooldown reduction on those two skills very very huge then the next node which is the main node that we want is against devastating odds i know i mentioned this a couple of times before but since i'm in the pox tree i gotta go over it so damaging at least three enemies with a kinetic skill grants you 30 percent armor piercing for four seconds so 30 percent armor piercing for four seconds which is also 15 percent extra crit damage and that 30 percent armor piercing bonus is also going to reduce the cooldown of gravity leap and endless mass so even if you hit more than three enemies, it's still not a bad thing at all. Then the second part to this is damaging less enemies, make your shots crit for four seconds. So no matter which one you get, you're always going to be on top, even though you still want to get the what's called the critical shots going. If you don't get the critical shots going, it's not a problem. You're still going to be able to spit out a ridiculous amount of damage. So now let's hop on over to the ascension tree. So with the Ascension Tree, what I basically did was I grabbed majority of the nodes in Brutality, Armor Piercing, because that's going to increase, you know, uh, what's called make it easier to take down tank your enemies and increase our crit damage, uh, close range damage, because we're always going to be up close with the SMG, and then weapon damage, because that's, it's going to increase our weapon damage. It's very straightforward. Then in Endurance, I actually grabbed uh, Resistance here because, again, we don't have a lot of Resistance, so I figured that would definitely come in handy. You can also go and grab uh, Armor Nodes before going into the Prowlist section if you do feel like your character isn't strong enough or is dying from like uh, physical damage really easily, so this will definitely help it out by a bit as well, but the main one is Resistance. Then we go into Prowlist, actually, to grab... Uh, to increase our critical damage by an extra 10% because of how often we're landing those crit shots. And then the next node is damage against elites. I only have about six points into this, but you can max this here out or go into armor. Either one is not really, either one is uh, what's called just dependent on your situation. If you feel like you're not tanky enough, grab some armor, or if you want to do a little bit more damage, then you can grab that there. So that covers everything for this build. I do want to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. If you guys found this video enjoyable or helpful, drop a like and subscribe because I'm going to be releasing more content just like this. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.